Hi, this is Katherine Potter, uh, associate trainer with Art to Ride, doing a voiceover for her submission from Vero from Australia with her standard bread gelding chili. So we've had some email exchanges talking about um, slowing down a little bit with the training, and um, she's really close here. Uh, Vero, I think, you know, it's just a matter of little tricks that I hopefully will point out in this video and you'll be right there. So the <clears throat> it looks like you're attempting to get him with the, you know, bringing the whip back to his hind end there. I, I think he's got a lot of forward, so if you just leave the whip in your wither hand, let it drop down to where your leg would fall and use the outside rein to ask him to step over when he's hollow and to the outside rein. Um, he, he, his lateral work is beautiful, so I think that'll work very well as long as you're consistent with the outside rein. And use the inside rein to ask him to go down, typically lifting the bit into the corner of his mouth is the most effective. And if he comes up, you ask him to step sideways and then give him a chance to go down. Um, if you're asking for sideways, a little less inside rein there, you're kind of blocking the inside hind when you pull on the inside rein. So you want to lift your hand upward instead of back. And I would um, suggest maybe spending a few sessions just teaching him to hoe on a light aid with the rein. He, he uh, is pulling you off your feet and... Um, that's really up to you to decide what a light aid is and how to get him to stop. Usually with a voice command, a light aid, and then a, a follow-up with a voice command so that he learns to not pull you. That'll help down the road with every kind of halt. So just never let him pull against your aid. So that's a great, this is a great time for you to reteach him, you know, what is the correct tension. The work in hand is perfect for that because, you know, you both will figure it out over time. But he's just so close. I mean, he really wants the stretch. You're very good with, you know, recognizing when he's doing the right work. Um, just a few little tips. Make sure if he goes down, you give him a really good aid. I'm sorry, a really good reward, even just stop work altogether when he goes down for the first time and walks a certain number of strides with his head down. Um, you can give him a treat, you can give him a voice approval, whatever works best for him, just so he knows this is exactly what we want. And maybe the first time you just stop work altogether when he gives you four good strides or whatever you determine of stretch in the working hand and you put them up because that's the best and the treat that's the best reward of all and then he'll really get clear and then each day you'll build on that so maybe you know once he's got that as um yeah this is what we're doing then the next time you would give him a voice approval or just a treat let him stand for a minute give him a treat pat him whatever you know what what makes him feel most appreciated. So I would use the whip at the where your heel would hit him instead of reaching back to the hindquarters to get him to step over. He steps over very easily. And a little less inside rein um, for the leg heel. You can lift it, but most of the cue for the leg yield is tapping with the whip on the side, stopping him from going forward with the outside rein, and don't hold too much. You want a, a quick catching the shoulder and then release to see that he'll, if he'll go down and forward. I'm sure you're learning all this stuff already. He's just so close. He's a lovely boy and very athletic, and this is going to come really fast now, I think. I Also, looking at the lunging, I mean, what a great trot this is. 
and he really does want to stretch. Look at that. So I'll try to point out every time that he's where you want him. That's lovely. As soon as he puts his nose below his knee, you can start saying good boy and giving and kind of letting him go forward if that is a good reward for him instead of pulling him on the circle. You know, sometimes it's not about, about making a perfect 20 meter circle at this point. It's, it's about encouraging the stretch, however, is the best for him. So sometimes with my horse, once he goes into the stretch, I will give, you know, let him walk straight for a few strides and then ask him to stay down there by a little play with the inside bit. It would be great for you to use side reins with him. I think that'll help him because he's looking for contact. He likes having contact with the bit and he'll teach himself with the side reins what good contact is. Right now he thinks heavy contact is something he can lean on and we want to dispel that because that actually throws him on the forehand, throws you off your feet and you're having a little bit of a battle here with him instead of it being light and easy. And I think he's willing to do whatever you ask him to do. He's very willing, sweet, sweet temperament, and very sound. So long side reins that allow him to stretch all the way down on a lower setting on the side. And I think that'll solve some of this issue with the too much contact. And help him to lighten his front end too. So he's got great work with his hocks. He's, he's a little bit out behind still, which is normal when they're not over their backs yet. And I think we can kind of let him, he's got a lot of muscle development in the lower parts of his body and we want to let that to kind of soften and build everything on the top line so you know shorter sessions for the winter more work in hand no more than 30 to 40 minutes between the work of hand and the lunge line so he's not overly fit And I think he's just not quite ready to do the canter right now, but probably very shortly as soon as he learns the stretch. You know, you can keep working on it a few strides at a time, and as long as he's respectful and can do it, it'll help the trot and the stretch. So, you know, Will was saying, Again, even on the lunge line, when he does stretch down, you know, stop. If he does, like you were saying in your question, if he does a full lap, you stop for the day, give him a reward, put him up. He'll get it really fast. He's smart and he's very willing. And I think once he builds those tiny muscles, he's going to come up in the withers significantly over the next year. And this will become very comfortable for him. That's lovely. Really nice. Yep, he really wants to stay there. So I think with the side reins, it'll free you up from having to pull him off balance to get him to stay on the circle because he'll have something to lean into and then you won't have to be as involved and then he'll learn to lighten and just doing the work in the stretch I mean this is a lot of stretching really good work wonderful And 
find, as you can see, I think these little, he's just having a, a hard time, a uh, small circle in this direction. It's just stiffer to the right, not unusual. So he gets nervous because he doesn't feel capable. Actually, your ridden work, the canner on the straight lines, he's fine. It's just he has trouble with a 20 year circle right now. Until he gets, you know, bent over his back, that's the axiom that we use that he stretches longitudinally from nose to tail and builds that bend, and then he'll have the ability to bend in a circle laterally. So, you know. You can keep trying the canner, but um, it's not very effective right now until he builds the, the top line. And you can canter on straight the straight under saddle very easily. He's really good. You'll see later. So I can't wait to see him with some side reins and see how he. But, um, plays with the contact. And the working hand will help with that too. You reinforcing that, you know, we don't stop on a strong aid. He'll start to learn, oh, this is way more comfortable for me to just hoe on a verbal command <laughs> and not pull. And part of the pulling is that he's just not strong enough. So really good work with him. Really like this horse. And he gets to a really good place here. This this pace is fine for him. He really starts to stretch nicely at the end of this. He starts to relax. And that will just improve and improve and improve. Well, he'll learn that being down there below his knee is a really comfortable place to be. He's just so, he's right on the verge of finding that out. Yeah, yeah. And then you can have a more steady contact when he stays down there. And, and keep it as light as you can. This is really good. That's not too slow for him. He's really pushing up into his back with his hind legs. His hocks are starting to come under him a little more, especially when he goes down below his knee. So I would be verbally saying, really good boy, good boy. You know, after you've like stopped and given him the day off <laughs> after he does it, you know, many strides. That was really good. Good work. So we talked about the tack. Um, I think, you know, the bit is fine. Typically, Will recommends a loose ring, French snaffle. And the saddle fit, we talked about, um, it's kind of bouncing behind, which usually means that it's too tight in the weather. And he is protesting quite a bit when you ride. So... Hopefully you can talk to a fitter nearby and figure out if there's a way to get the saddle a little wider so it's matching the shoulder angle instead of the wither angle. Well thought everything else looked fine. And I agree. It's interesting in the ring, he, the ridden work, he's really responsive to your um, good hands and lighter on the aid, it seems like. 
So, you know, he's, he's right there. There, look at that lovely, lovely stretch. Yeah. Super. He's got a, just a wonderful walk. I love his demeanor. And he's fully capable of these leg heels in the walk. Just be careful you're not overusing the inside rein. Because that actually, every time you pull on a rein, it kind of slows the, the, the corresponding hind leg down. So you want him to be going from the inside leg to the outside rein and only use the inside rein to keep him from turning his nose to the outside of the bend. Otherwise, you know, it shouldn't have a lot to do with the leg yielding, or any lateral work. And you should be able to correct if he does go bend to the outside with his head. You should be able to correct that with like one stride, you know, feeling his mouth on the inside. So your goal here is to um, do that leg yield with uh, the same fluidity that you have now and as much stretch as you can get. That's lovely. The leg yield improves the stretch, improves the walk. This is just really good work throughout. You know, minor things I'm pointing out. You may want to look at the video on leg yielding, um, especially like the position of the outside leg from the hip down. And the inside leg is forward on the girth. And I would um, start reading through the tests that we've posted on the Facebook page because that gives you the training system. What do you start with? What's first, second, third, fourth? And then you can look up those videos that Will has posted on each of those movements. And you know, do it in the same order. This is a counter rom bear. Um, he's kind of going hollow and losing impulsion. So I, it's not very effective at this point, but a little bit of a tent of a shoulder in here. I think he's not quite ready, but will be very soon. And you don't want to slow them down too much if you can avoid it. Um, try to build on it from the leg yield. And do it down off of the short side. I usually start the shoulder in on an 8 meter circle and then I maintain that bend. Base down the long side with my body and lower body is in the same frame as the leg yield. So these are good movements to teach the horse to step away from your inside leg. Not something that Will typically does, but it doesn't hurt to, you know, if you're going through a gate, you want the horse to walk around the gate end. It's a smart thing to have the horse be able to do. In dressage, the 
uh, one thing that is in the testing at a higher level is um, turn on the haunches. Uh, that's a pretty advanced move because you want the horse over the back in self-carriage and keeping the rhythm of the walk. Uh, he would do anything for you. <laughs> Clearly, I mean, what a good guy. That's a lovely stretch. Look at that. Poking his nose out. And you have very light contact with the beginning of the trot so he can go into it and look for the stretch. I like it. And we were talking about the tail swishing. So this is where Will was saying he thinks the saddle is the pinching him. And it's kind of blocking his shoulders so he can't he's going behind the vertical and but still that's a beautiful stretch. Beautiful. I think once you get the saddle figured out, he's just gonna everything's gonna clear up and all the groundwork's gonna you're right there, Vero. I mean really. This is so lovely. You're gonna have such a great partner next year. All your patient work this winter will pay off in the spring. And I think the side reins will help out. Um, and the work in hand also educating both of you on what contact works for the two of you together. He'll learn to, you know, use the side reins to figure out what's comfortable. And once he's over his back, he'll um, settle into his the contact. Beautifully. Yeah, again, the canter's a little tough for him on a small circle. To the short end, you can canter on the long side pretty easily. He's really put together nicely. Nice long neck, super well balanced, a little bit uphill, and great use of the hocks. He'll have a very free shoulder once it's not being blocked by the withers of the saddle. Hopefully they can just expand the wither uh, the pommel of the saddle a little bit and they'll be comfortable for a few months. There, very nice stretch. Wow. Lovely. Yeah, maximize those long sides because he really, he loves it down there. And you can just watch how it talks. Everything stabilizes when he gets below his knee. Really nice. Yeah, so you want to make sure he stays there and not behind the vertical. That was really nice. 
It just has trouble going through the short side. Yeah. Seems like. I think all that will get resolved very quickly. Then he's not pulling against you at all in the saddle, in the arena. Because you're very giving with your hands. And he's a, he's a nicely forward horse that can do the work. So he curls when he's having a little trouble bending. Ah, you get a really nice stretch after the can. Very nice. Yeah, he just really has a hard time in this direction. It'll it'll come around, Zero, I promise. He's right on the verge of getting it all together. The groundwork is gonna help him so much. Just doesn't know how to how to bend yet without those top line muscles supporting him. Getting his hind legs under him. We'll get there. Nice stretch. So just make sure you're rewarding him with your voice when he goes down like that. And down the long side, I mean, he's stretching in the canner. It's just the, the circle he can't handle. So, you know. So close. I love the way he uses his hind end. Really going to be a big support to him. Very nice. Really enjoyed this voiceover. Um, I'm glad you decided to keep him. And, you know, it's just a matter of using his body most efficiently and he'll be there by the time you're ready to ride next spring. Good work. I can't wait to watch your progress and um, let me know if you have any questions.